Hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name's Todd, and today we have an American Base uh, VFL 1100.1 power supply board. This is just the power supply board. It is uh, separated from the output section. So this board had a extremely burnt area, as you could probably see right around this area here. Uh, the section of the board has been replaced by a previous tech. So this is what I'm working on. I'm working with uh, some work that had already been done. And today I just wanted to go over uh, what makes a power supply section uh, stable and what can make things unstable. So I don't know how many people have had boards repaired for it to come back, for it to be uh, burn up again, or just not last very long. But here I'm going to try to explain what to look for to help maintain that uh, durability of the power supply section. So as you can see here, I have four channels hooked up to the scope here. Uh, so I'm going to call this transformer one, transformer two, three, four, five, and six. And as you can see here, I have my post-it note. I have my transformers labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over the gate voltages of the uh, gate drive. And these, uh, these voltages that you're going to see are what drives the transistors um, on and off. And this is where balance comes in. You got to have good balance on these, otherwise things are going to heat up, things are going to fail. Um, so as you can see, no transistors are installed, which means we're not going to be charging the rail capacitors. The rectifiers here are just going to be uh, idling. So I have the remote turn on power going. This is on my uh, this is on my 10 amp current limited power supply just let you know again there's no power supply transistors so there's no rail voltage this is just looking at the drive circuit uh, there has been extensive damage to the uh, pre-drivers here and of course the uh, board itself has been heavily damaged so what I'm looking for is I got all the drives back up and running I've got all the uh, problem areas more or less taken care of but now what i'm doing is i'm looking at amplitude of the drive so transformer one is the yellow and blue channel here so the yellow channel we're at 6.47 volts and then the light blue channel is at six 0 0.09 volts and then transformer 2 the pink channel we're at 6.16 volts and then the dark blue channel we're at 6.10 volts so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my remote off because we don't want to short the uh, power supply drive. And now we're just going to switch transformers here. We're going to switch the leads over. And we're going to check the next transformer. And then these two leads are going to come over do transformer number four. And these are in banks of three, so three high, three low uh, for each transformer. So now this is going to cover transformers three and four. So we're going to go ahead and fire up that drive again. So transformer three is the yellow and light blue. 
which the yellow is at 6.23 volts. And the light blue is at 6.13 volts. Transformer 4 is pink, which is 6.10. And the dark blue, which is 6.5. Then we're going to turn the remote back off again. And then move over to the next transformer. And this is why I uh, suggest having four channel scopes as you can see the difference uh, from multiple points at the same time. So we're going to turn the remote back on. You can see the drive build there. So we're going to do transformer 5, which is 6.1 volts. And 6.2 volts. And then transformer 6. 6.08 and 6.14 all right so now i'm going to remove all my probes here clean up this image here a little bit so what we have are the readings for those transformers and the primary goal is to get your gate drive voltage as close to the same as possible. So uh, my problem area, so that you can see I have an average of about 6.1 volts. So that's going to be the average that I would be shooting for for this board with the drivers, the pre-drivers that are currently installed. So transformer one, I have one bank that is high. And transformer four has one bank that is high, which I have underlined. Transformer one is high and transformer four is high. So these transistors here probably would heat up because they're working against a gate drive of 0 0.609 volts and working against a gate drive of 6.1 volts so this may heat up and this may heat up and that is where you're going to get your issues um, under load of imbalance so what this tells me is i got to go through and check the Zener diodes, which the previous tech um, I found last night, or yesterday, I should say, the previous tech had put a, a 4148 signal diode in, in place uh, where the 10 volt Zeners go. So all the rest of these are 10 volt Zeners. And then of course, Back towards the driver card, I do see a section here that got pretty warm that I'll have to check. So these voltage differences are probably going to be based on the transistors and probably some possible uh, bad zeners. Because remember, when things short out, there's a ton of current that goes through all this. So from here, it just goes down to tracking down the components that are uh, giving me these high voltage values and that's what I'm aiming for is my 6.1 volts so I just want to make that quick video on what I look for when it comes to drives I know uh, a lot of people ask me about drives and so the biggest thing to look out for is making sure your drive signals have the same amplitude 
And then from there, of course, running matched parallel transistors. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And again, the rail capacitors are not charged because I didn't have transistors in. So I had no high voltage here. But if you did, keep your fingers out of the rail voltage here. This can get pretty spicy. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.